right. We'll go to wide receivers. We got half an hour around before kickoff. Garrett Wilson. Right, well, Denver. Well, well, well. <laughs> at Denver, uh, obviously, we like all at Denver matchups. You like him at 14. That's really only two spots above the experts. Not a, not a huge banner thing right there. Gabe Davis, you also like against Jacksonville as wide receiver 23. Four better than the experts. W what's there to add on either of these guys? Yeah, Garrett Wilson, I think the Pat Sertain mirage is getting a lot of people nervous about playing him. Zach Wilson certainly makes you nervous, and I understand that completely. We just saw Zach Wilson, though, look actually competent. I'll need to see it a couple of games before I actually buy this guy can throw. But, man, I mean, we know he could throw. It's just a matter of reading the defenses and giving his guys chances to make plays. He was doing that all day against a solid chief secondary last week. Again, would love to see him repeat it before I fully buy in. But regardless, at least he's funneling all the looks to Garrett Wilson coming off 14 targets last week, 26% share on the year, 40% of their air yard so far on the year, and 44% first read of the look. So he's just locking in on, on Garrett Wilson, and Garrett Wilson's good enough to make those plays. And as we alluded to, Pat Sertain used to be a shutdown guy you couldn't go after. He's allowing 114 passer ratings so far on the season. And then any matchup he gets moved around and, and matched up with Demiris Mathis on the other side, 154 passer rating. We know how bad this Broncos team is. I am not worried at all. Wilson will get his. He will get open. I'm just going to want to sit starts about him. And you can't be nervous in this matchup. I think it's going to be beautiful. And Gabe Davis, three straight games with a touchdown, wide receiver 15, 35, and 16. I get that it's a little bit boomer busty. He doesn't catch the score. What's he really doing for you? He's catching the scores. And he got a much better matchup this week than Stephon Diggs. Plus that, that Jacksonville defense is bottom three in pressure rate so far this year. So I think it's going to be Josh Allen in that pocket, bombs away, lighten it up. Too many questions this week on Gabe Davis. Get him in your lineup. Let the blowups continue to happen. All right, let's talk lower. Debo Samuel, you like him at 22, which is seven lower than the experts. That's a pretty decent discrepancy. Also, Pickens against Baltimore, you like him at 34. The experts like him all the way up at 25 for some reason. Yeah, it's already out that Debo's not going to be 100%. That makes me very nervous. Wasn't 100% last week. He still ran 81% of the routes and just had one target. Uh, no, actually zero targets. Complete and utter decoy. Very real scarecrow risk yet again in this matchup. And even if he is playing and not a scarecrow, it's not a great spot against Dallas. I do really like Brock Purdy, but Ayuk, in the games where Ayuk has made it through the entire time, we just have one in six points for Debo Samuel so far on the year. I do not see this as a spot where we want to pepper him into our lineups. I, I'd be very nervous rolling him out there, to be honest this week. I'm putting in DJ Moore tonight over Debo Samuel in a, a couple of leagues where I have both of them. Uh, and, and I'm not too worried about that. We'll see. But George Pickens, yeah, ranked as a, a – borderline wide receiver two right now. I mean, come on. Kenny Pickett has been such garbage. Baltimore, I know their secondary has been a little banged up, and yet they've still been locking down on teams, getting after quarterbacks at an elite rate so far. And Kenny Pickett has been horrendous against pressure so far. Uh, given that Pickett's coming off a four-point day, wide receiver seven. These are his finishes on the year. Wide receiver 51, wide receiver nine. He had that one huge game with 10 targets. Other than that, wide receiver 39 and 71 afterwards too. So hasn't even sniffed a top 30 finish other than one week. I'm not banking on a 25% hit rate in a bad matchup with bad quarterback play. I want I don't want Pickens in my lineup. I, I love the player, but I do not like Kenny Pickett. And I, I hate Matt Canada, who will not use this guy the right way. All right. We have a million Hail Marys that you have on here, but before we yeah, get well, to them, I'll fire them all off. Before we get we'll to them, we got we got a super chat. Yeah. Well, yeah. I don't want to interrupt the flow just because we have this for a clip. So Mr. Trey Saracen, okay, let, let me let me let me hide the banner and we'll hit it as soon as you do the wide receiver Hail Marys. Yeah. So Michael yeah. Wilson, 42%. You, you wrote about him. He's like the least likely to be out there for you. But got the size, has tons of burst, agility, catch radius, so all 70th percentile or higher according to player profiler. So even though he doesn't have the fastest 40-yard dash, man, this kid for his size can actually move and, and move really well agility-wise. Seven catches on all seven targets. He's caught every single target that's come his way. That's going to make him uh, this young quarterback's best friend. 76 yards in two scores. So he can get it done in the red zone, intermediate game, plus in three of his four games. He's had over 20 A dot uh, on his uh, 16 on the season. So he can go deep. He can get it done over the middle of the field. He can get it done in the red zone. Simply put, the kid can do it everywhere. And he's got a great chemistry right now with Josh Dobbs. His yards per out run lead the team right now, even more than Marquise Brown. And 17% target share last week, continuing every single week to trend upwards in his usage. I love the kid. I want him in all my lineups. I'm plus eight ECR and have him as a wide receiver to lock him in this week if you have him. Michael Gallup, fresh off 11 catches and 152 across his last two weeks. Shootout style game. Definitely has that ability to meet, beat the man coverage. The San Fran, if you're going to beat him, it's through the air. And I think they're going to need to throw with that offense putting up points on the other side. So I like him. We talked about Wandale as well with 29% targets 
per route run. So I jumped to 65% of the routes last week. And his role is only supposed to grow from here. The camp, training camp MVP of last year. But we just know Daniel Jones loves his slot weapons. He has always peppered it at will. Uh, you know, Richie James is a top 12 receiver when he took over that full-time role for Wondell Robinson, who had just had 13 targets, nine catches, and 100 yards in three quarters before getting hurt. So I actually really like Wondell uh, based on what we saw last year in the training camp. And so far this year, he's been the most reliable guy in a very lackluster core. And then I wanted to go even deeper. If you need a desperation deep bomb, Alec Pierce at 2%, Justin Watson for the Chiefs against Minnesota. Both of them have great matchups. Tennessee for Pierce, again, Minnesota. Both big bomb, you know, a ton of them throughout the year. So if you are just pure Hail Mary at your flex and you just want a shot at a deep bomb, I think either of those guys uh, could get it done for you this week. What is up, you fantasy wolf? Thanks so much for tuning in. If you haven't already, share your thoughts in the comments, check out some more videos, and join the newest Wolfpack by subscribing below. Ooh.